Welcome to our lecture online. I think it's a good idea now to summarize the integral tables, the integrals that we're now able to solve when we know the inverse hyperbolic functions. So here we can see, and, and also what I wanted to point out is that all the ones that we've worked on so far always had a one in the integral tables, not an a. So let's say that we have another constant in there other than one, what does the solution look like? So we have the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus a squared, a being a constant, that is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x over a. The restriction is that x must be greater than a. And if we have an integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared, notice the only difference is that this is a minus, this is a plus, again, a being a constant, then we get the solution to be the inverse hyperbolic sine of x over a, and it's good for all values for x. If instead having dx over the square root of x squared minus a squared, now we have the integral of dx over a squared minus x squared like this without the square root sign, and also these two in reverse, that is equal to either 1 over a times the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x over a, or the 1 over a times the inverse of the hyperbolic cotangent of x over a, one or the other, and the one you pick depends upon the value for x. If x is smaller than a, we use the inverse hyperbolic tangent. If x is larger than a, we use the inverse hyperbolic cotangent. And we are indeed saying the absolute value of x being smaller than a or larger than a. And finally, we have these two right here. We have the integral of dx over x times the square root of a squared minus x squared, or the integral of dx over x times the square root of x squared a squared plus x squared. Again, a in this case is a constant, and notice it's either minus 1 over a times the inverse hyperbolic secant of x over a, or minus 1 over a times the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x over a. The restrictions on x here is that x must be between 0 and a, and here it's simply that it cannot be equal to 0. And again, notice the only difference here between this one and this one is that here we have a negative sign, a squared minus x squared, and there we have a positive sign, a squared plus x squared. Now, these are typically integrals that are very difficult to do unless we understand the solution in terms of the hyperbolic functions or the inverse hyperbolic functions. And of course, by now we've learned how to find the expression equivalent to each one of these six inverse hyperbolic functions. So hopefully this will help you out when we meet some of these kind of nasty integrals. And that's how it's done.